Good morning. So glad to have you watching 3 Plus U on this Monday morning. And as you can tell, we are not in the studio. We have taken a road trip to beautiful Blue Ridge, Georgia. Over the course of this entire week, we are going to introduce you to some of the wonderful artists and businesses and vendors you will find here when you make a less than two hours drive to this quaint mountain town nestled in the North Georgia mountains. We're going to kick off today's show, though, with a visit with Bill Oyster. He is one of the most prolific bamboo fly rod makers in the world and we have a chance to step inside his store. So we have come inside to where the magic all happens inside Oyster Bamboo talking with Bill Oyster. Nice to see you this morning. Thank you for being here. This is technically the, do you call this a studio Bill or do you call this a workshop because it is art that you create here. It is art but we call it the workshop. Okay. Because a lot of work goes on here. A lot of work does <laughs> go on in here. This is kind of the, the foundation of it all. These bamboo I will call them a rod, but they're called a culm? A culm, C-U-L-M, or, uh, or you could call it a pole at this point. Okay. Um, so yeah, just a big stock of bamboo uh, from the Suey River Valley of Southern China. That is the importance. On our way up today, one of our coworkers was talking and he said, you know, I was at my in-laws and they've got all this bamboo and I was wondering if it's one and the same. No. No, there's about 30 square miles in the whole world uh, where they commercially farm this Tonkin bamboo. So every fly rod made since about 1900 started its life in that same 30 square mile patch in the Suey River Valley. When I say that he begins to work the magic, I mean this is truly, you are world class. You kind of are on your own pedestal when it comes to the work that you do here and you are sought out. Jimmy Carter has one of your rods, members of the royal family. Yeah. I have purchased rods from you. It all began as I'm remembering the story of you deciding to reconnect with fishing and you thought, I think I'll make my own. Yeah, it was, uh, it was definitely not a business idea. <clears throat> it was just, uh, I just loved fly fishing. I loved the whole artistic aspect of it and the most beautiful piece of tackle for the fly fisherman is the bamboo fly rod. It's very historical and you know, traditional and, and uh, I was originally looking to purchase one and then just kind of started reading, learning more about them and uh, came across some old, old books and just for fun started playing around with it to uh, see if I could make my own. And you still have that rod? I still have that rod, I sure do, and that's the one I'll never sell. Do you ever fish with it? I fish it all the time, I sure do. So I know that there are people watching. We're going to kind of let our conversation wander a bit because I want to make sure I point something out. Just like you thought, what if I could make my own? You found that you're not alone in that. People love to learn from you. So you have classes. In fact, you've just released dates for 2024. Yeah. That's how sought after you are. We are booked solid uh, until 2024, but we just popped up those dates. Uh, we've had people sending us deposits without dates, just trying to get on that list. So the hardest part is getting here, but uh, once you get here, uh, we'll, we will get you through it. We're running uh, about 200 people a year through here right now, making their own. You believe very strongly in the lineage factor, because just like you say, you'll never get rid of the rod that you made. The people who come to your class leave with their own rod, which is part of what's unique, right? With your classes, right. you complete the work. Yeah, you actually do it all yourself and you complete it. And uh, class ends Saturday evening and Sunday morning, you can take it to the river. You have a great phrase I saw on your website where you say that the fishing rod is America's version of the samurai sword. That's right. That right. That's right, because uh, for such a young country, there aren't a lot of crafts that we can lay claim to as originating here in the United States. Mm -hmm. But the split bamboo fly rod is one of them. Uh, previous to that, in Europe, they fished wooden rods. And <clears throat> not until they came to the United States, and we have these smaller streams running the East Coast, uh, Appalachian mountain chain, little brook trout everywhere. Uh, is what they found and they needed a smaller lighter rod and they looked to bamboo to give them a lighter snappier material and uh, set the worldwide standard for over a hundred years and some people think it still does. I did ask you at the beginning are we in your studio or your workshop and you did of course say workshop but just right over there where the camera can't yet see right. is sort of a studio. You were an art major at the University of Georgia so you have not abandoned that part of you 
you have a very special touch that you put on these rods. Yeah, we do a lot of customizations on these rods uh, in a lot of different ways, but one that we do that's unique here is the hand engraving on all the metal work. Mm -hmm. Uh, if the customer wants that sort of thing, and even in the classes, the students can have them engraved. Um, anything from scroll to sculpted scenes, portraits, anything you want on them. Uh, because these rods are made to last for generations, so they're very much uh, sort of thing that you will make for yourself. You could use your whole life and then you pass it down someday, so uh, they're, they're special to people. People come from all over the world uh, to take part in these classes. You've even set it up because it is such a draw that for folks who want to go ahead and jump on, and by the way, you should be seeing a QR code on the screen as we talk so that you can go on their website and see how to sign up for those classes. Y'all even built some apartments above the studio to house people when they come. Yeah, we've got rooms right upstairs here, so when they come, uh, we have guys fly in from all around the world. It's nice that we're so close to the Atlanta airport. Uh, we can have a car can come and pick you up and bring you up here to Blue Ridge, which is nothing like Atlanta, you right. know, and, uh, and then they can stay right here on site, walk to all their meals in the historic downtown here, and, uh, and just make fly rods all week. A lot of folks want to hear this, some don't. Christmas is not far away. Uh, so you kind of look like Santa Claus a little bit, Bill, <laughs> and you can play Santa Claus for people because if they act quickly, there is time to possibly give a rod to somebody. If they act very quickly, <laughs> uh, we could still get you in on uh, Christmas for this year. Although, of course, we have gift certificates and that sort of thing. We could right. sign you up for a class or we could make you a custom rod. Uh, if we got on it right away. I feel kind of guilty asking you something because I'm afraid it might be a bit exploitive, but do you remember how it came to be that President Carter bought a rod from you? I, I do remember that story, yeah, for sure. You, you won't forget that one. Is it a story you want to share? Uh, sure, we could share that. So uh, let's see how, to, how the short version of that. So uh, originally the Carter Center uh, someone there decided it would be a good idea to have a rod made from us for Jimmy Carter and they commissioned it and the idea is it was going to become his rod and he autographed it before we varnished it and everything but he had never seen the final product. Um, even though we had sent him the blank it was all covered up and um, but they, he was going to fish it for a year and then it would go to auction for to raise money for the Carter Center at the end of that. So they commissioned it, we made it and then when we went to present it to him, uh, we were on the river and he looked at the rod and looked at me and immediately said, come with me. And we went to the river and he started fishing and said, well, you're going to have to make a new one for the auction because this one's staying with me. So uh, we've act since then, we've done half a dozen rods with him that has raised uh, a lot, a lot of money for the Carter Center. Thank you for letting us come. We're going to continue our tour of Blue Ridge, but in the meantime, here's where you can find uh, Bill's store, Oyster Bamboo, nestled in the beautiful scenery here. They'd love to see you come in person. It's a great store for you to come and browse through. You'll really feel the ambiance when you come, so don't hesitate to make a visit here, but you can also call them the website there on your screen, and that will take you directly to the link for you to follow if you want to go ahead and try to snag one of those coveted spots now for 2024 for the classes that they are now releasing. Thanks again. Thank you.